Hey guys, just like every Saturday, I'm here to talk about an episode of a superhero animated series, and today I'll be talking about the Season 2 episode of Batman Beyond titled Terry's Friend Dates a Robot. If you haven't seen the episode, you can either wait for me to sum up the events of the story before I get into the review, or you can pause the video and go watch the episode right now before I spoil lots of things. Terry is practicing being Batman in a Batcave, where he's fighting robotic replicas of some of Bruce's old foes from some 50 years ago. He destroys the Killer Croc robot, and so he has to get a replacement at a factory that sells robots. He is giving his friend Howard Groot a ride, and while Terry is filling out the paperwork for Bruce's robot, Howard buys his very own robot under the table to be his fake girlfriend to boost his popularity at school. It works until the robot begins to feel like Howard doesn't want anything to do with her, and she goes on a bit of a rampage. I find it very fascinating that this shared universe of shows including The Zeta Project, Batman Beyond, and Batman the Animated Series can all tackle very similar subject matter for given episodes, and those episodes ultimately don't feel similar, nor do the entire series really feel similar at all, even though they are set in the same world. And that's really the way it should be. In the real world, comedy exists in the same realm as tragedy. Some people see life as a fantastic adventure, while others see the life they are living as terrible with nothing good going on. There's no real reason that a shared universe should be tonally the same all across the board. And I think that is what helps this episode have such a different feel as, say, the Heart of Steel two-part episode from Batman the Animated Series. That episode plays the robot slowly taking over Gotham as a horrific event. It evokes invasion of the body snatchers, and I also felt a heavy vibe from Blade Runner and Battlestar Galactica. But this episode, well, it should be just as horrific, but for different reasons. We will see later on in this series that robots are not mindless machines like your microwave. Characters like Zeta have feelings and emotions, so it should be morally repugnant to us to see a guy who is illegally selling robots to anyone with the right amount of credits. But despite some of the moral implications this episode skirts the line of, I don't find myself as horrified by what going on here as I did in Heart of Steel. Just on the surface, this episode is one of the funniest this series has done so far, and that really goes to show you just how talented the people behind this series are, since as I alluded to earlier, the subject matter here isn't quite as lighthearted as the material plays it up to be. There's a thin tightrope these guys are walking, throwing some really heavy emotional stuff on the screen that shouldn't be funny, but then playing it as a high school comedy and making it work. That is talent right there. So let me discuss the two aspects of this episode, specifically the high school comedy bits and then the heavy moral implications. The high school comedy stuff is just absolute gold. Part of it might be Howard's relentless optimism. Even when his house is on fire and everyone at school knows that he bought a robot to be his fake girlfriend so that he could be more popular at school, when one of his classmates offhandedly mentions that people will be talking about this party for ages, he has this big goofy smile on his face that's hard not to reciprocate with your own smile. Does this show his inability to go through a character arc? Absolutely. But with a minor character who only features heavily in one episode and only appears in cameo any other time he's on screen, I think that's okay. Then there's also the, shall we say, lewd references this episode manages to get away with. At least three times, this episode throws some references to sex and alcohol at us, and I was very surprised it went as far as it did. And this episode handles these PG-13 jokes in a way that anything that purports to be for all ages should. A kid who doesn't know where babies come from isn't going to think twice about the scene where Cynthia is attacking Howard in a closed room and Blade says, go Howard from the other side, while an adult is going to appreciate the joke. Having said that, maybe it is because I'm an adult, but I reiterate how surprised I was at this episode and how far it was able to go with these jokes. I still thought they were funny in how they were handled, but I had forgotten how juicy this episode was with those moments. Now, about the other half of the episode, with the moral implications. Like I said, it is a testament to the talent of the men and women involved in this show that an episode that is essentially about human trafficking can be handled humorously, but this episode does it and does it well. You might be saying, hey, they're robots, not humans. But in response to that, I would bring up Zeta, who is not a mindless machine. And you even begin to see that sort of in this episode with Cynthia, as she begins to transform into the villain of the episode. And I say villain in the absolute loosest definition of the word, since it's hard for me to look at what Cynthia does as air quotes evil. She is programmed with certain parameters, and she is attempting to follow those parameters. Now where it gets fuzzy is that the only programming we see is that she is to be completely loyal to Howard. We don't see the creepy robot seller guy program that she is to attack any girl who puts her hand on Howard. But then again, is this her following orders and therefore we can't really fault her for her actions? Or is this more than just a machine that does what it's told and it's making its own choices based on the programming that it receives? If that's how you want to read it, then we're right back with the morally repugnant idea of human trafficking being at the heart of this episode and not really being addressed. But I can forgive that because there's a lot of meat to chew here and I feel like there's no right answer to some of these questions that I'm asking. I'm sure I could come up with some other things to talk about here, but I've already gone on longer than I usually do, so I would like 
like to know, what did you guys think of this episode? I personally really liked it for the heavy subject matter and for the surprising way that it handles that subject matter. While I think there are some minor ways this episode could have been improved, those ways are minor and would hardly bring down the quality of the episode overall. So that's it for this review. If you like this review, then you're in luck because next week I'll be doing a review of an episode of Batman the Animated Series. And the weekend after that, I'll be coming back for another episode of Batman Beyond. And if you guys did like this video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next week with some other kinds of videos. See you then.